Hey everyone, it's Jason. Welcome to another uh, Marvel United X-Men unboxing. This is for the Big Gigantic Kickstarter uh, exclusive box stretch goals. Um, this is going to be several videos. I'm going to do all the heroes first, and then I'm going to do all the villains. Um, and I'm going to kind of try and put them sort of in groups that make sense. Um, I tried to put them in sort of like the teams. Now, they're all kind of based off the, uh, if you've watched all the previous unboxings of the Marvel sets, they're sort of based off their 90s, um, like their 90s teams, um, like that era. Um, so you got like, because you had like the X-Sports with Cable and um, Gold X-Men Blue and Gold and stuff like that. Of course, there's always some new stuff because there was, you know, Days of Future Past and Phoenix Five. Um, there's also stuff in here that's, uh, some characters in here that, uh, weren't in the round during that time. Uh, so they don't really fit into any of these teams. Also, lots of these teams have changed over and over and over. Um, so some of these, uh, some of these X-Men can fit onto multiple teams. So I'm gonna try and put them in what best works for that 90s team. Um, but, you know, we'll see where we hit. Uh, but yeah, here's this, this awesome box art. Um, it's like all the other covers show off. They usually have like four or five characters on it. Usually like the four main characters. This box has every single stretch goal character on there. Some of them are like so tiny and like just kind of almost hidden. Like here's Fanko Max hidden back here. Here's a little tiny marrow. Um, yeah, some of them are really small on the side. You can almost barely see any of them. You can kind of just glimpse like Callisto up there. Um, but yeah, this artwork is definitely fantastic. Um, or uncanny, maybe. And then on the side, is really cool, too. So they're going to show some of the teams. So we got kind of like the new mutants here. Um, then this side, same thing. And then on the top, of course, we have uh, Alpha Flight. And um, there are so many characters in the set. So many characters in all the other box sets. And I've said this before. There's no way... Um, we couldn't miss something. Uh, so there are characters who are like, well, why isn't this person there? Why isn't that person on the team? Um, they did the best they could. They tried to get lots of the quote-unquote teams to about four to five characters. So you could play it as a, you know, a four-player game. Um, with maybe swapping out a character here or there. Uh, so they did the best they could. Um, again, so many teams switch around. So, we're going to start off with these two boxes. So, uh, this is Old Man Logan and Mohawk Storm. So, these were bonuses for um, pre-ordering certain tier levels. So, anyone that joined Kickstarter, if you're not, so, sometimes you do this with, uh, Simon does this a lot. But, other campaigns you do this too, is... If you back even the base game, if you had just got X-Men United, you would have gotten this big giant stretch goal box. Even if you bought none of the other expansions. Um, but then they give you a tier, so if you, I don't remember what the tier level was. I think it was like the second one, which was like the base game, like Age of Apocalypse, and like maybe one other set. Um, you would have gotten Mohawk Storm um, as an extra bonus. And then if you back and got every single set you also got old man logan so it's kind of a extra so besides getting just all the kickstarter goals it's also an extra little incentive or something i want everything here's a bonus for buying everything um what's also neat is these two miniatures they come in their own separate boxes because it just depends on what tier you got whether you got them or not is that then they have space in the big Kickstarter box for them. So there's two empty holes in the trays. So that if you got one or both of these, you can put them back in the trays with the rest of the characters, which is really cool. Um, I need to grab some tokens. Okay. All right, so let's start off with, we're going to start with Old Man Logan. So if you've been watching all of the other videos, 
you'll have seen we've already had several Wolverines. Uh, this was one thing that people did have an issue with, um, were duplicate characters. Um, because you had the base game X-Men, but then you had Phoenix 5. Um, although they were villains, you got duplicate versions of five X-Men characters we already had. Um, but I don't think people are complaining about that as much, because that's not really different than the new purple characters that are heroes and villains. Um, but you only saw Mohawk Storm. Like, we got regular Storm and Mohawk Storm. And then we had Wolverine, and then we had Logan from Gage's of Future Past. Um, and now we have Old Man Logan. And there's actually one more Wolverine coming as well. Um... And a lot of people are just having issues with that. Uh, I can see their points both directions. Um, I would... In the long scheme, if, if you would have taken out Mohawk Storm, um, Old Man Logan, and given me two other characters that were missing, like brand new characters, I would have definitely personally preferred that. But I'm not mad I got this because they're, they're different characters. They play different. The same thing with X-Men the first class. Um, the five X-Men there play differently than their more experienced counterparts. Um, and that's even sort of like with this. So even here you could argue, well, you got Old Man Logan and Days of Future Past Logan. They're both older Logans, but they play very differently, um, because they have very different stories. So, uh, the Logan from Days of Future Past, um, uh, in case you didn't watch that video, just a quick, um, reminder of what that, what he is is um so that's a future where sentinels took over um killed most of the mutants uh so wolverine's kind of like a freedom fighter trying to resistance trying to stop them and they send kitty pride to the past um so yeah he's older grizzled but he's also like constantly fighting this wolverine however is part of the um well it started old man logan and actually got known as wasteland Storyline where the villains took over instead of Sentinels and Mysterio um, tricked Wolverine uh, into killing all of the X-Men. He made illusions. He didn't know. He thought they were all his worst villains attacking and he killed all the X-Men. Um, so on that day he went, uh, tried to kill himself. Didn't work obviously because he's Wolverine. Um, and he... Let me start looking at some of his cards. Uh, he vowed to not... He, he killed Wolverine that day. He only became... Old, he became Logan. He started a family. Didn't pop his claws. It was like... It's been like 50 years. Um, and then Hawkeye uh, recruits him to help him drive some stuff across the country. Because Hawkeye is blind. And inevitably seeing how bad everything is in the rest of the world... Um, he still holds off having to killing, he, he eventually does have to start killing people. Um, but it took a lot to push him that far again. Um, and then later on, shenanigans, comic book stuff, he gets brought to the regular Marvel Universe. Um, well, when regular Wolverine is dead, so he kind of takes his place for a long time, works on kind of work, just to like relive working with these old friends and family that, you know, he, they all died, decided he could try and fix, save his future. Um, so it's a very interesting story. Uh, all right. So that's basically, he's kind of a pacifist. Um, even though he has, you're going to show his claws on here. Um, but he has movement, heroic, move, heroic, 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 um, his double wilds. Uh, so then he has three copies of Tired of Fighting. If retired is spaced up in the storyline, gain one uh, fight token. Until the beginning of your next turn, you may ignore one damage from each villain. Otherwise, this is just a movement. Um, ooh, he's got four of them. Um, then he has two special cards. He has a starting card. So this is going to be retired. Gain two fight tokens. As long as this card's based up in your timeline, you can't use attacks. So this is kind of a neat thing. So it's the way he's going to work is he's going to watch a movement, heroic. He's going to get around the board. Um, once you play this, he's going to gain two tokens. Um, 
but you can't use them. He's kind of storing his anger. And then his tired of fighting, if we're tired of space up, you gain one token. So the earlier you play this, the better. And then you keep gaining these tokens, but you also can't gain damage. Then he has a special card that nobody else has is the bottom of his deck. Then when you finally draw this card, you have My Name is Wolverine. Uh, this is when he finally pops his claws. Gains four more attack tokens if retired is face up and the starting turn it face down. So at this point, by the time this comes out, you should have had two tokens from this one, um, plus four more from the other other four, so I'd give you six. Um, and then this would give you, you know, so you have ten tokens um, as a last minute resort. Like it's your last card um, before your deck runs out. So you need to jump in, but you have ten tokens to use. So basically you can jump out, go berserk, take out anybody you need to. Um, so it's a very different way to play. So that's Old Man Logan. Alright, then we're going to look at Mohawk Storm. Um, oh boy, these big, there's going to be a lot of long videos here. Um, so I'm going to jabber on about characters. That's alright. I like talking about these characters. Uh, so yeah, here's some lightning bolts on her. That's pretty cool. So this one, she got a punk outfit, shaved her head into the Mohawk. Um, so this is about the time she, um, took over as leader of the Morlocks. She beat Callisto. Um, I'm not sure there's an exact timeline for that. Um, but it's around that. It's right around, I don't know if she did that maybe before or after. Um, and then uh, fought control for with Cyclops for the X-Mac because she eventually lost her powers. It's a whole nother story. Um, yeah, so that's just going to be an interesting different character. So this is a little bit more, um, maybe like rage-filled Storm. She has a starting card. Because um, like current Storm, like the one from the base set, more like your... You think of Storm like in the 90s cartoon. She's kind of like the motherly figure. Um, like, you know, she she will resort to violence if need be, but she'd rather not. This one's a little bit more like, no, I'm going to bring the battle to you. I'm pissed off. Um, so, Ib Indomitable Will, as long as this card is based off on the storyline, ignore the first crisis token you receive in each hero or villain's turn. And then her cards are Move Heroic. Move attack, double attack, single attack, movement, double heroics, wild of course, and then she has three copies of preemptive strike. Uh, so attack against up to three different targets in your location. So she's going to try and take out whoever is there. And she can get around very quick, so you need to take out some thugs quick. Drop a henchman or two. Um, definitely very interesting. Alright, so that is our Mohawk Storm. Alright, so before we start getting into like full on teams, let's look at some of the outlier characters. Since we've already had Old Man Logan, who's a time, I guess kind of a time traveler, a world traveler, um, alternate reality, we're going to look at Blink. Um, this is arguably one of my favorite characters. Um, I, I even like uh, just when she's in Generation X. But then she got uh, Age of Apocalypse came out. She's a popular character. Then she headlined the exact same character headlined um, the Exiles comic books, which I love anything with what ifs. Um, so she is a teleporter. Um, she throws little javelins to control her teleportation. And she eventually, the regular version was found in, in the regular universe and stuff. It's a lot of cool stuff. So she was uh, raised in Age of Apocalypse by Sabretooth. Um, so Sabretooth's a good guy in there. So that'd be really cool. I wouldn't definitely mind if they made a third version of this. If they added alternate roles, if they added more Age of Apocalypse characters. Um, that would be cool, like, a couple of heroes, a couple of villains, that'd be sweet. Uh, so she's, she's gonna have movement, because she's a teleporter. Move, move heroic, move attack, move attack, heroic, heroic attack, wild, double wild, and then a warp portal, it says move to any location, then you may move any heroes to your location. 
because uh, she creates a portal and then everyone can throw, or she can throw these darts and teleport, or her uh, javelins little things she told she can throw them and teleport people that way. So she gets one here that lets her do that, but movement, she gets one for heroic, one for fighting, and then one for wild. So if you're maybe fighting a boss uh, villain that needs, you need to be able to move around a lot and dodge, she's definitely a player for that. Alright, so another outlier that's not really part of any of these teams is going to be someone that's actually only recently even considered to be a mutant is Gwenpool. Um, her entire story is crazy. Um, so here she is with Jeff the Landshark. So, Gwenpool's whole story started, basically, it's like, it's essentially like this. So, uh, they were doing alt covers, um, for the comic books, and, um, she does get a starting card here. So, what they're doing is they have a bunch of Gwen Stacy, uh, Peter Parker's, um, you know, old girlfriend who, you know, later became Spider-Gwen, and this is one of the things that came about, is that they, I think they made... Spider Gwen or Ghost Spider, she's called now, um, and people are like, oh, what if, what if other, what if other characters are Gwen Stacy? And there's lots of characters they do like um, variant covers. They're like, what well, if everyone's a vampire? What if everyone's a zombie? And they did one where, what if Gwen Stacy was other characters? And one of them was, what if she was Deadpool? So they dressed her up and basically made her in like a pink Deadpool, um, called her Gwenpool. Um, I uh, yeah, she was known as. I don't know if that's official if they called her or not, that's everyone called her. Um, and someone apparently thought, hey, that would be a fun comic book. But the twist on the whole thing is, um, instead of being Gwen Stacy, it's actually a character named Gwen Poole, P-O-O-L-E. Uh, she comes from an alternate reality where comic books, like basically she comes from essentially our reality, where Characters are all comic books. She's a big nerd. She knows everything. Um, and she finds herself in the Marvel Universe. And she has all this knowledge she can do and utilize. So she basically becomes, oh, I can become an assassin. You know, like Deadpool. Because she knows that this is a fictional world. But she knows how, she knows everything about everybody. And then later she got, like, reality warping powers and all this stuff. And um, then in a giant battle, she... Found like she was able to anchor Krakoa to like, show that she was a mutant. Um, yeah, pretty crazy story. So here's her starting card, Jeffrey the Land Shark. Um, yeah, so as long as this card is based up in the storyline, at the end of your turn, you can deal one damage to a thug or henchman your location. You did not damage this turn. Um, so you get free extra damage, so that's fun. Um, I think she's going to get. She's kicking an aim agent. Um, movement attack. Some attack. So there she's, you know, reading Amazing Fantasy. Uh, Spider-Man's first appearance. Um, uh, heroic. Some wilds. Um, then she's going to get her special cards. She has two of these called Medium Awareness. Um... To flip any two cards in the storyline. So that's actually kind of neat. Because she can flip them whatever direction. So you can either um, hide something that's bad. That maybe has an ongoing effect. Flip a card back over that needs to be flipped back over. Like uh, someone's like, Saucy's character has stuff. Use this and flip it over so it can't be used again. She can let you reuse them. Um, so it's kind of a neat thing. She combine well with other players. She's also got two copies of... Um, no consequences in a fictional world. Uh, discard cards until you have one card in hand. For every card discarded, deal one damage to everything else in your location. Discard all civilians there. And then finally, she has two copies of Send to Gutter Space. Remove both Gwenpool and the henchmen in her location from play. At the beginning of your next turn, place them in any location with no threat and deal two damage to that henchmen. That's actually a very interesting ability. Um, yeah, sure, she's kind of wacky. 
Um, yeah, she, she shares that goofiness, um, like self-awareness with Deadpool, but otherwise she has no connection with Deadpool, uh, personally. Um, alright, so then the next character we're going to look at is another oddball X-Men character that a lot of people don't know. Goop. Um, I don't even know what Goop is. Goop is Goop. I guess that's the only way to say it. So here's got a camera. He took a lot of pictures. Uh, he's this weird Bob. He speaks in this, um, odd language that only a few people understand. Um, it's like symbols and stuff. Um, he was part of the... Ecstatic, which then later became X-Force. It was X-Force, and it became Ecstatic Line. Uh, so when they originally canceled the long-running series of X-Force, made a team that was basically mutants that were basically like celebrities, like someone was trying to get fame off them, but they kept watching them kept dying. Um, which they kind of played that joke on, joke to in the Deadpool movie with uh, the X-Force team dying. Um, cause that's, you know, what that whole thing was. So, he's got a couple of starting cards. He's got two of them. He gets to start with Accelerated Regeneration. As long as this card is based up in the storyline, gain one wild token whenever you are KO'd. And he also gets Professional Videographer. Or Videographer. Um, as long as this card is in the face-up storyline, Another hero performs two or more heroic or attack in your location. That hero gains one wild token. Um, so he's going to have some interesting cards, I bet. Uh, attack, heroic, one wild, single wild, double wild. Um, Three copies of Travel Across the Margins. At the end of your turn, swap this card with any hero card in the storyline. So that could be definitely fun. He's also got Dimensional Gate. Move to any location and uh, two wilds there. And then finally, Cyanic Mass Control. Re relocate any number of thugs and civilians between locations. So that could be interesting if you're trying to, like, fix how something goes or what you can do. Uh, move all the thugs to one spot where someone can, like, do a destroy everything. Um, could be interesting. Yeah, so he's a neat little character. Um, uh, does talk with Wolverine. I believe Wolverine understands him. Don't know how or why. Uh, but that is definitely interesting. So another newer character. So this is not one of the 90s one. Is... Pixie. Um, I think they included her um, just because she's a popular character, but also because they want more teleporting characters. Uh, so she's part of the New Mutants of the er, more somewhat current era, I guess, because now there's the New Mutants or the original New Mutants back together. Um, but yeah, she basically has uh, like uh, flying wings. She can uh, she can teleport, but it's not her original mutant power. She, uh, has fairy dust she can do stuff with, uh, hallucinatory stuff. She learned how to teleport because magic, um, Colossus' sister, um, was trying to reform a soul star, took part of her soul, and made a soul, like, dagger. Um, and so now, then eventually stuff happened. She got it back, because she didn't get that chunk of her soul back into her, but she got it as back as a soul dagger. Um, but she can use that to cast some limited magic spells, including teleportation. Um, yeah, there's so much with these characters. Um, I can't hit every single mark. Um, so, I'm trying to think. Her name is Megan. I don't remember what her last name is. I usually try and set the characters' names are. Movement, move heroic, move heroic, move attack, heroic, heroic attack, got some wilds, and then she's got, uh, teleport, um, you and other heroes in a location must move together to any location, 
Uh, so she can forcefully move people. So anytime they have these black boxes, now it's a, a, a must. You don't have the option of using it. So she gets one with a movement, one with heroic. Um, and then she's going to also have hallucinatory dust, one with movement, and one with heroic, which says, attach a stunned token to a villain or henchman in your location. The next time a villain, uh, next villain, a location you're in your location, next villain turn, their bamf is cancelled and discarded. So, a... That is going to be the no bam token, is what we have. Um, so we got two of them on our board here. So we got a bunch of other different tokens. So we get two of those to go with that, to shut one for each card, essentially. In case you play, uh, somehow can play both at the same time, or both, um before um you know that villain activates maybe uh or somebody else has one this may, might be another character so that's actually a fun little ability as well all right so speaking of mutant non-mutant characters we have a fun duo we're gonna look at so we have Cloak and Dagger, um, who are sometimes considered mutants, sometimes not considered mutants. They keep changing their status back and forth. Um, either way, they're definitely cool. They were part of the Dark X-Men. They've never been a part of the official X-Men team, but they're cool. So we have Tangy Bowling and... Oh, why can't I remember Cloak's name? I want to say it's like Tyrell, but I might be thinking of Night Thrasher. Um, oh, jeez, I hate it. I don't remember his name. That is terrible of me. Um, so this is actually also a little bit neat. So they kind of have like these steps. So you can have them um, kind of standing together like that. So it looks like coming out. So uh, basically they're light and darkness powers. Um, so Cloak has, here's a starting card for him, um, so they use the Dark Force, which is also, I think another reason why people might think they're mutants, because there's other mutant characters that are access to the Dark Force, which is a special realm, um, some people use it for teleportation like he does, other people, um, like the rushing superhero, rushing I don't want to say super rushing uh, character. Dark Star uses blasts. But basically he can pull people into his cloak. Um, and he can teleport to different areas. Um, also, when then they're traveling through this Dark Force dimension. Um, and they he also trap people in there and kind of make them like sort of like face. I not really face their fears, but like uh, at least mess with them a little bit mentally. So, he's going to start with this. Um, so, Dark Force Teleportation. As long as this card is face up in the start line, you can use a move uh, to move to any location. If Dagger is in your location, she can move with you. Um, so, that is fun. So, then his other cards are going to be some movement. She just noticed right now we got... Uh, Blink was a teleporter. Pixie was a teleporter. Doop had some teleportation skills. Cloak has some teleportation. They threw a bunch of these teleporting characters into the Kickstarter box, which is very interesting. Um, Alright, so then he also has a move and uh, star. Um, sorry, heroic. Just the heroic attack. Move attack. Move Heroic, his uh, Wilds, I keep knocking Storm over, I need to move her. I was going to break her by accident. Um, and then he has a couple other cards, so he's got two copies of Dark Force Channeling. Remove both Cloak and a Henshin uh, in his location from play at the beginning of your turn. Put them to any location with no threat and deal two damage. So we've just seen that ability before. Um, but it's on, not bad, it's on a different character at least. Uh, Bond. If Dagger is in her location, she may draw cards until there are three cards in her hand. So, 
generally you'd always want to play these two together. Like that's sort of the idea. It's cloak and dagger, they're a team. Um, but there's nothing to prevent you from playing them separate. And then we have dagger. So she wields light powers and she has light daggers she throws around. Uh, so that's why they're a compliment. She uses the light force. Um, light force generation. A lot of these cards based up in your story. If you start your turn with two or more cards in hand before the draw step, you may immediately perform a free heroic card locate or free locate heroic action in your location. Um, so that's definitely cool. Um, so we're gonna see some of these. We have um, like she's jumping out and attacking, which is really neat. Um, move attack, move heroic. Just heroic, just attack, move attack, move heroic, her wilds, and then her special abilities. She's going to get light force daggers, attack against up to three different targets in your location. Um, light force purge, turn up to two thugs in your location into civilians and then rescue them. And finally, she also has bond. If Cloak is in your location, he may drop to there are three cards in his hand. So, yeah, so it's kind of fun. Um, we've seen some of the abilities repeated, but you know, this many characters that is bound to start happening. Um, Alright, so we got one more character to go through before we kind of start getting into um, some of the stuff we can do for teams. And that is we got Namor McKenzie. Uh, also known as the Submariner. This water splash effect is really cool. Uh, you got a trident. Um, those speedo. Um, also, so he's also in the Phoenix 5 set. Um, so this is kind of fun because he's just like the regular version of him. Um, so he's also the first, no one, generally known as one of the first mutants. Um, although I think like chronologically, like, like, uh, Apocalypse might be the first. There might be someone before him, even. I'm sure there probably is. Um, but he's, all, he's known as, like, one of the first quote-unquote mutants that were in the comic books because he was half-human, half Atlantean, half which technically makes him a mutant. Uh, so, for a long time, for a decent while, he joined the X-Men. Um, now, currently, after the Phoenix Five incident and all this stuff, uh, he's back to just being Namor underwater. I mean, he'll help if he needs to, but it's not his primary goal anymore. So he's got movement, double movement, movement heroic, some more heroic, uh, some attack, double attack. I'm surprised he didn't have more attack. Um, wilds. Oh, here's all his attacks. So we have two copies of Avenging Son of Atlantis. Uh, Attack twice in any location. Then he also has two copies of King of Atlantis. Uh, you may discard either one civilian or one thug from your location and one from each adjacent location. Um, so you can get rid of his threats or get rid of uh, civilians, I guess, if he doesn't like them. Um, but yeah, you could play him with uh, some of the other Marvel characters. Uh, recreate the Defenders now, I believe. You should have enough characters. Um, alright, so let's jump into some other fun characters here. So we're going to start off with one of our uh, uh, exclusions to the uh, giant-sized X-Men. We are missing Sunfire. Uh, uh, Shiro, which is why I don't remember his last name for some reason. Um... But yeah, so the giant size X-Men being the second team that came out, which had Wolverine, uh, and, which is in the base game, and Storm, which is also in the base game. Um, we had uh, Colossus, Banshee. Um, there's this picture. So yeah, Colossus and Banshee. Um, oh boy, what, my, my brain just my brain just blanked out here. Um, Nightcrawler, who, ooh, wait, Nightcrawler's also gonna come up, he's out, he's coming later, um, and then we were also missing, 
So I think the only character that we don't have is Thunderbird. Um, which I get why they didn't make him because he was only in a handful of issues. Um, but we do get his brother. Um, so yeah, that's definitely... So yeah, we're missing one of him. He's, a, he's also in other stuff too. So maybe we can get a big Hero 6 set now. Um, we can add him in there. He's in the original comic version. Uh, move and Heroic. Move Attack. Uh, just Heroic. Move Attack. He's Wilds. Um, so he's got two copies of Solar Fire. Uh, deal one damage to everything in the adjacent location and discard all civilians there. Um... Oh, we actually had some other regular ones. We have a move heroic and another attack. And then his last two ability cards are solar, absorb solar radiation. Uh, gain one attack for each location with no civilians and no uh, thugs. So you can use one card to take them out and then you can gain a bunch of extra attacks. Um, or you can be deadly. He's got that cool fire flame. Uh, and I was talking blinking Age of Apocalypse. He would definitely be a cool one. You get Hero Saber too. If you could get a um, cool version of him, um, there's a lot of gameplay they could definitely do. Um, all right. So as we're talking about fire characters, uh, we need to talk about this awesome one, Angelica Jones, Firestar. Um, so I don't know if she's ever actually been part of the X Men. She's got this cool radiation fire but she's just microwaves i believe microwave radiation um what really makes me excited that she's in here um so she has several different ties so she can be part of the old spider-man cartoon you had spider-man as amazing friends which is uh spider-man firestar and iceman so now we can create that three-person team um unfortunately don't get miss lion the little dog um you know Hooray for anyone that knows any idea what I'm talking about. Uh, she was also part of uh, the White Queen's Hellion team when they, she first started the Hellions, uh, who we don't have either. Um, at least not. Obviously not a villain. Um, but yeah, so the it was the regular Hellions, which is... Oh, I can't see my remember all of them. Jetstream, Cat's Eye, Tarot... Empath, uh, Beef, I think there was one more, I can't remember, um, I think there were six of them, but, uh, Firestar and, um, Thunderbird were also, um, what, not Thunderbird, Warpath, sorry, Warpath, Thunderbird's brother, Warpath were also recruited for a while under that, and then they eventually went their own ways. Um, she's also, she's a tie to the X-Men that way, too. So, we're gonna look at her cards. So, she's got, um, movement, move heroic, move attack, um, fire, or attack, move attack, she's got a lot of movement and attacking. Uh, move heroic, of course, she gets her two wilds. Um, then she's going to get her special cards. She's going to get two copies of Microwave Heat Emission. Uh, two attacks against a single target in your location. And then two copies of Microwave Energy Manipulation. Two heroics. Um, this also means you could make a, almost make a team of fire characters. Because um, so far we would have, we've seen Sunfire, we'd have Firestar. You have the Human Torch from the Fantastic Four set. Um, so there's at least three there. Um, and then you can almost... Oh, there's only one more ice... Like, pure ice character. Uh, as I say, then you could do like a team battle of three fire characters versus the two ice men and somebody else. Um, that would be hilarious. Alright, so we were just talking about the New Mutants. And... Um, Emma Frost. So let's take a look at Emma Frost. I am kind of surprised she didn't make it into a box set. Um, as popular as she's been, or as, you know, forefront of X-Men she's been. Um, it's kind of 
kind of odd if she made it into a stretch goal. Um, but yeah, she's also a purple, which means she's a villain as well. Um, so there's Emma Frost with her thing. Um, also, this will help me work on if you want to make a Generation X team. Because we do have her and we have Jubilee. Um, so it's only two people. Um, but hopefully that means, again, if they do more character on... They do a third set, there's another team they can add more characters to. Um, technically, you could put Blink on there. She wasn't part of Generation X, but she would have been if she hadn't um, died in the comic books. Um, so let's look at what Emma Frost can do. Um, she got some movement. Move attack. Uh, heroic attack. Turns into her diamond form. Uh, should she get some heroics? Move heroics. Double heroics. Some wilds. And then she's got two copies of organic diamond form. If you have three or less cards in your hand, draw one card. Do not take any damage during the beginning of your next turn. And then her other power is two copies of Omega Class Telepath. Uh, this turn, you can use the symbols on the bottom of the two previous cards in the storyline instead of only the previous one. And it generates a wild as well. Um, so that's even crazier. Um, yeah, she could definitely be an interesting character to play as. Some defense, uh, getting some extra, no, nothing like super crazy. Um, but not bad nonetheless. And since now we'll jump to the next character, since we've mentioned him several times now, we will look at Warpath. Uh, James Proudstar. Uh, he has big giant serrated knives. So this costume that he has, um, you know, he could get, again, he could fit multiple teams. Um, that could have put him under, and he, this is more of, like, a more recent costume. So, he was part of, like I guess, like, the Hellions for a bit. Um, he was also part of the, uh, New Mutants, and eventually X-Force for a long time. So, you could throw him with Cable's X-Force team. Um, he was definitely part of those guys. Uh, then later he became part of Wolverine's X-Force team for a while. Uh, which we have enough characters to make that X-Force team. We also make the third X Cable's X-Force. His second X-Force team, which was like Colossus um, and Forge and stuff too. Um, yes, yeah, so a bunch of different teams he could belong to. So, we, we didn't stick him with the X-Force characters because he has a more modern costume. Um, Alright, so we have... Warpath here. He has some attack. Move attack. Move. Sorry, move heroic, then a move attack. A heroic. A heroic attack. Heroic attack. Uh, wild. Wild. So he's going to have, we're going to see, he has two copies of superhuman, superhuman physical abilities. Attack and then draw a card. So his, he basically he's, uh, I don't think he's an Apache. I don't think he, he's part of a tribe. Um, but yeah, he has like enhanced strength, speed, uh, senses. Um, he can track really well. He can take you know damage. He basically good like melee combat um, all around, just like his brother Thunderbird was. John Proudstar. Um, he also technically has the ability to fly. Although he doesn't seem to use it that often. Like they had him learn it in one of the later X-Force comic books. Um, but he, I don't think I've ever really seen him use it that much. Um, I think it's more of like a burst flight versus like a strap he can just fly around like, like Rogue or you know someone like that. Um, then he also has two copies of Acute Senses. Put a top card of the Master Plan deck and put it back on top. Um, so he's got two movements and kind of see what's going on. Uh, this also, again, I keep thinking of team versus team mode with the odd uh, blue and gold. Um, might be a fun one. You have him and some other, couple other characters you could probably find. 
um, against like Professor X because he did try and kill Professor X in his first appearance because his brother died and he didn't like that. Um, so that'd be kind of interesting to do. Um, let's see who we want to look at next. As long as we're talking about uh, disgruntled characters, there's no one more disgruntled than Mero. Uh, her name is Sarah. I don't believe she has a last name. She's a Morlock because she could pair well with uh, Mohawk Storm. Uh, she's also a villain. Um, for a while, she ran Gene Nation, um, which is a group of Morlocks that were doing bad stuff. So there's our card. Um, and then she joined the X. She tried to kill Wolverine, and then she, like everyone does, then she joined the uh, X Men for a while. Um, got her work with Gambit and stuff, um, and then uh, got her abilities under control. And then she's lost them and got them under control. She keeps going back and forth. Her ability is bone growth. She has these bones that protrude from her. She can pull them out and use them as weapons. Um, she also has a starting card, which is Dual Hearts. If this card is based up in your starting line and you are about to be KO'd, instead of discarding your last card, you can flip this card face down to draw one card. So this represents she has two hearts, and actually, in the comic books, um, Storm kills her uh, to stop her from doing being a terrorist, and that's before she joins the X-Men. Um, and we've ever said, oh, she's dead, and then... Nope, she actually wasn't. Um, she also has history with Angel because she was uh, a child in the Morlock Tunnels when uh, the mutant massacre happened with Sabretooth and um, the Marauders. Um, but then she found Angel down there uh, who, who helped save her and... Uh, you know, found when he, before he lost his wings and then became Death and all that. So there's a little bit of tie in there as well. So she kind of like has a soft spot for him. All right, so we have some movement, move heroic, move attack. I kind of wish she didn't even have any heroic, but maybe that's the only, you know, uh, attack, attacks, heroics, her wilds. Um, then she also has bone armor. So as this card is based up in the storyline, if a villain or henchman in your location goes damage, during your villain turn, they take one damage at the end of the turn. And then two copies of Bone Weapons. Um, two attacks split like against you and your adjacent location. Um, she has all this mo uh, movement ability. I would suggest, I mean, I guess it's probably based off because she lives in the Morlock Tunnel. She's just hit Essentially sewers and maybe representing that if she can get around quick um, You can see on her base. She has a sewer cover um, So yeah, that is a neat character um, So as long as we were talking about Wolverine, let's just keep going with Wolverine and we'll start um, So now we're starting us uh, kind of our teams um, or at least groupings of characters. So we're gonna look at uh, Weapon X Wolverine. This is right after he gets his Angamanium. Uh, he's got that funky helmet on. Uh, he runs around, goes crazy, yells at everyone. So there is Weapon X Wolverine. He does have a starting card. I love the little picture up there too. Um, healing factor. As long as this card is face up on the start line, you may ignore one damage uh, each billing turn. If you do, your next card must be played randomly. Um, so that's good and bad, I guess. At least it's an optional effect. It's got some heroics. Move attack. Move attack. Single attack. Double attack. Heroic attack. Um, wilds. Then he has three copies of Ankamantium Claws, which are just double attacks with an attack on the bottom. Um, so he's going to definitely do a lot of attacking, which makes sense for a Berserker Wolverine. Um, and then he was eventually found by uh, 
Alpha Flight team, and then he joins Alpha Flight after that. So, while we're running on the Wolverine kick, let's look at his clone daughter, uh, X-23, Laura Kinney, um, also, who was more recently Wolverine, um, uh, she, she got her feet claws down there, her toe claws, uh, plus she's only got double claws, she has a healing factor, and senses is like Wolverine, um, I'm not exactly sure why they gave her flames, um, I can only think of two reasons why they would have done it. One, is you're just maybe showing that she was raised essentially as an assassin, because she doesn't have, um, she's more willing, and knowing that she has a healing factor, she puts herself in harm's way more than she needs to, so this could just be kind of showing her, like, running through a fire to attack, she doesn't care. Um, other thing might be, she might be sort of trying to represent her trigger scent. Um, so I like that her, uh, so like we have the Wolverine cards. So like Old Man Logan has two, has three claws. Um, and then Logan from Gates of Future Past has the same symbol, which is a different one. And then hers only has the two. Um, too bad they didn't have Dakin in there. That would have been fun too. Um, again, another exclusion. Um, but at the time he was sort of still a villain. I think when this is sort of, I mean he was, wasn't as, as really a hero as he is now. So again, that stuff they could release is more characters like that that they're missing. Um, but her trigger sense is, is uh, then it was mentally put into her when she was being trained as an assassin, um, and when she was being cloned, is they can release this, like, uh, aerosol. If she smells it, she will attack and kill anybody she sees until, uh, whoever she sees until it wears off. She'll hunt them down. So it might be maybe kind of what that fire is supposed to represent is like that rage. Um, that's probably a giant stretch, but that's what I'm going with. Uh, so she also has the healing factor. Um, as long as this card is faced up in the storyline, if you have less than three cards in your hand at the end of the villain turn, you may draw a card. So her healing factor works differently than the uh, Weapon X Wolverine. Uh, movement. Move attack. You can see her foot blade there. Move attack, uh, heroic, heroic attack, her wilds, and flames behind her. Um, two copies of martial arts, Mar master martial artist. Double each attack in the previous hero card in this story. Now imagine playing like this one after someone that has like two attacks on the bottom. Um, that'd be awesome to get four. And then, two copies of Tactical Genius. For each heroic, you perform this turn, give one move or one attack token from the pool to any hero. Um, so yeah, you could definitely plan this out very well. Um, yeah, she surveys the room as soon as she walks into it. That's sort of what this is going after. Um, so that is definitely fun there. Uh, they can also eventually, if they do another set, they could add her... Her clone, which is, you know, clone slash then treat as her daughter, uh, which is, um, Honey Badger. The waiter is, is currently known as, oh, why can't I remember this? Um, oh, I can't remember. She has a new code name now. She was originally Honey Badger, and they changed her code name recently. Uh, but she also has, uh, Claws, but I think she has one claw in each hand. Maybe she has two. Uh, but she has a healing factor that's just as potent as uh, Laura's or Logan's, except she doesn't feel any pain. Um, so it's kind of an interesting thing there. I want to say it's like, it's not Scout, but why does that sound familiar? Alright, so I think we're going to call this Hero Box Part 1, and we're going to leave you with a cliffhanger. Um, of another Wolverine adjacent character. Um, so we'll do a part two. Hopefully we'll get through all the rest of the um, characters. Because I don't have to spend, you know, maybe jump through a little bit quicker on some of these. Um, and then eventually we have the villain box set. So see you guys then. Bye.